How's it going? This is Zach Murray with Earthbound Media Group, and I would like to thank everyone for joining us for today's webinar, uh, Reaching Health Consumers with Mobile Sites, Apps, and Advertisements. The webinar should be about an hour, and we are going to have some time at the end for questions and answers. And just for a little bit of background information on EMG, we are an, inter an interactive marketing agency based in Southern California. And we specialize in serving the healthcare industry specifically with many wide-reaching services, including uh, expert consultation and implementation of website design, digital and social marketing, uh, as well as branded content and what we're going to talk about today, mobile strategy. So prevent, presenting for you today is going to be Jessica Liu, who is a digital marketing manager here at EMG. Uh, and Jessica has worked with some of our most influential uh, healthcare clients, including Loma Linda University Medical Center uh, and St. Helena Hospital. And Jessica specializes in lead generation and customer retention, uh, as well as mobile and social media content strategy. Uh, before I turn it over to Jessica, I just want to remind everyone that we do encourage you to submit as many questions uh, as you want throughout the presentation. You can go ahead and enter them into the dialog text box on your screen. Uh, the presentation in its entirety uh, will be posted uh, on the EMG website later this afternoon. Uh, we're also going to make the slides available. Uh, we have a lot of data, a lot of statistics in this presentation, so we definitely want you to be able to use those. So we're going to make the slides available uh, and put those on SlideShare later today as well. So all of the links to these resources, uh, as well as our so personal social media pages, will be posted at the end of the presentation as well. So without any further delay, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Jessica to get things started. Thank you so much, Zach, for the introduction. And let's see, let me get this started. Um, to begin, I'm going to provide you guys with an overview of the mobile landscape and hopefully wow you with some numbers on the incredible growth of mobile device adoption, especially in the growth of smartphones and mobile web usage. And also what matters to our audience today is probably reaching health uh, and health consumers with mobile sites and applications. So we'll be providing examples of industry mobile health applications done well, and also showcase some mobile sites developed by EMG, as well as um, highlight the key differences between a mobile site and mobile app in this section, and followed by a guideline of mobile sites best practices. And we want to also make sure to um, allow you to understand the opportunities to reach your health consumers through mobile health advertising. And you'll be able to ask questions throughout the webinar, and they'll be answered at the end. OK, so let's get started. To make sure we cover all grounds, my, uh, by mobile, we're referring to mobile devices, which are handheld devices such as uh, a cell phone. So mobile technology is exactly what the name implies. It's technology that's portable. So included in this category are feature phones, which are non-smartphones that have more limited computing abilities um, compared to smartphones such as the BlackBerry and high-end high -end device smartphones like an iPhone or Android. Uh, or Droid. And tablets and PDAs are also included in the mobile device category, so it's, it's on the go and generally always with you. So mobile devices are not personal computers, and over 70% of the world's population has mobile phones. Um, so it's impressive because that's over 5 billion cell phone subscriptions globally. And within U the U.S. alone, 82% of adults have a cell phone, and 60% of them go online wirelessly. So smartphones are experiencing accelerated rates, uh, rates of adoption. The bar graph here shows research from eMarketer that shows exponential growth in the number of smartphone users year over year, and predicting that the number of U.S. smartphone users will nearly double in four years. And also data from eMarketer show that smartphone owners currently represent 80% of all U.S. mobile internet users. So we know that if we're targeting mobile users, we're essentially focusing on reaching these smartphone users. And <clears throat> naturally, with the increase of smartphone adoption, there is a positively correlated increase in smartphone applications and web usage. So in this comparison between non-smartphones and uh, versus smartphones, we see that from 2009 to 2010, there was a 16.8% increase in downloaded apps on smartphones compared to non-smartphones. And the, remember, the non-smartphones are the feature phones, uh, such as your flip phones, um, with not as much um, computing capabilities. So also, there is a 14% increase in smartphone web 
uh, browser usage. So as soon as more uh, feature phones get replaced, the market will essentially be dominated by smartphones. And let's not forget about the iPads. Um, tablets are part of the growing mobile market. So with the introduction of the iPad 2, Motorola Zoom, and Samsung Galaxy Tab, tablet sales have been growing and are projected to grow to 81.3 million worldwide by 2012. And based on the sample um, of survey iPad users in 2010, we see that the frequency of iPad usage among US iPad owners also show that the majority um, at 56% use their iPad several times a day. So it's good to know that tablets are not all hype and the usage and adoption are likely to increase in the next year. In terms of online activity, mobile is, is becoming just as prevalent as desktop. And it's actually no surprise because your mobile device is generally always with you and always on. So starting in 2013, the number of mobile internet users will surpass desktop users. And as we talk about mobile versus desktop, it's not about um, which one is preferred. Um, it's actually more about mobile complementing desktop. In the two graphs here, we're looking at mobile versus desktop searches in a daily and weekly view. And although this is uh, mobile versus desktop searches, you can essentially use this as a proxy for broader mobile versus desktop activity. So essentially, if users are searching, they're in variable browsing content either as a result or before searching. Taking a closer look at the daily view, the search volume shows desktop searches peak in the morning while mobile searches peak more in the evening. And this behavior is in line with um, my own daily activities. Um, so if you think about this, you wake up, you check your phone, your emails, the news, and you go into work and the activity is high on your desktop. And then starting around lunchtime, desktop searches drop while mobile searches continue to increase. And desktop usage continue to decrease while mobile increase, surpassing um, the desktop searches by 8 p.m. at night. And in the weekly view here, we see desktop searches peak during work weeks and mobile searches peak during weekends. Um, based off of this graph here, you see that desktop searches are more subject to um, extreme fluctuations and mobile is more steady. So for those of you who are familiar with search advertising or you start in search advertising, you have probably historically have seen lower desktop impressions and clicks over the weekend. And mobile, so mobile now is a new opportunity to capture your audience over that weekend period now that people are generally online almost all the time. So let's talk about mobile in terms of healthcare. M Health solutions have been discussed essentially since the end of the 90s. Um, so M Health, for those who don't know, represents mobile health. And the benefits for patients and doctors of solutions um, that ease their lives um, daily seem pretty obvious. Um, so to give one example, the ability to use a mobile phone to allow doctors to remotely monitor the health condition of their patients offers clear benefits uh, for improving healthcare delivery. So the question is now, um, as posed by many market researchers, uh, what impact does new smartphone applications um, in the market created by Apple in 2008 have on the M Health market? And to answer this question, uh, we have to answer, uh, we have to understand that mobile devices distribution and mobile application awareness have high impacts on mobile health. I try to keep my slides less text heavy, but I do want to highlight some key um, important changes per these categories. Uh, so first, mobile devices have uh, key features built in that benefit mHealth, such as GPS for locating treatment facilities and sensors that allow for health monitoring tools for patients possible. And distribution with apps um, is more far-reaching with global reach uh, via app stores. Um, so that definitely has a high impact on um, mHealth adoption. And reaching consumers, whether it be patients, doctors, or health professionals, is facilitated through increased awareness of mobile devices and improvements in overall mobile user experience. And not to mention price points for apps and smartphones are now more affordable. Now types of health and wellness information search for online, whether it's desktop or mobile, it's very similar. Um, so for those of you who have attended my past webinars may still remember this slide and it's important to understand your target consumer. So 8 in 10 internet users have looked for um, health information online. 
And many of us here have searched on Wikipedia or WebMD about symptom treatment or condition. I know that even healthcare professionals like doctors um, oftentimes search online to provide better diagnosis and explanations for their patients. So looking specifically at mHealth, um, search growth rate across all categories have been uh, increasing and have seen an increase of over 1,300% in the past year. And this is data provided by our partner Google. Um, so especially in the biotech uh, medical services, uh, sorry, medical devices and equipment, and also vision care, the growth rate has been exponential. So with mobile, it means increased accessibility. Since it's always with you, and health consumers are constantly browsing and searching for health information. Majority still do their research at home, um, as indicated by the percentages here. Um, however, mobile, mobility means that they can look up information in their car and even in the doctor's office. And we want to remember that mobile searches serve to fulfill an immediate need and are oftentimes location focused. For example, if you're looking for the nearest hospital to take your kid uh, who injured himself at the playground, or if it's not too serious, you might want to look up information on how to treat um, your kid who just scraped his knee. Either way, uh, later on in the webinar, we'll focus more on mobile searches and how you can reach your consumers through some mobile uh, advertising options. OK. Um, so enough with the stats, and let's get to the fun part about reaching your health consumers with mobile sites and apps. And before we begin, we want to do a quick poll to understand how many of our attendees are uh, currently have a mobile optimized website or a mobile application. So we'll take a few seconds here to gather the poll. OK. So let's close the poll now. So we see here that majority of you, 60%, um, don't have either a site or app. And it's actually good to see that more people have a mobile app already than a mobile site. Um, so this is good insight um, to kind of carry over into the next part of our conversation here. So talking about mobile sites, um, we do want to mention that EMG is very capable, uh, or where we have experience in developing mobile sites and also mobile apps. Um, so if you're still asking whether or not you should optimize your website for mobile, and we, see, we saw that about only 30% of you here have a mobile site only, um, the, the, answer, the clear answer should be yes, because mobile devices are essentially becoming more and more integrated into our daily lives. And according to Google's data, um, they actually expect in, in the next 18 months for a 15 to 30% increase of um, overall site traffic coming from mobile. And frankly, I'm not surprised by these uh, stats because um, taking a look at these, this graph here, these are real numbers from one of our clients who has seen an increase in mobile visits to the regular website by over 400% from January uh, 2010 to January 2011. And I know I said enough for the stats, but I'm definitely a numbers girl. And if you have analytics installed on your website right now, which you should, um, so just Google Analytics, I encourage you to check your analytics dashboard and segment your traffic to see how many visits are coming from mobile just in the past few months. And, and we do have examples in the later slides that show you how to do that. OK, so with the increase of mobile browsing naturally comes the need for optimized mobile sites, meaning mobile landing pages are key. And in the dot mobile, um, mobile web progress study examined they examine the websites available via the world's most used global top-level um, internet domains. And the results revealed that mobile web is continuing its explosive global growth. And the 2010 study showed that approximately 3 million mobile-ready sites, compared to just 150,000 in 2000 and, uh, 2008, represent a two, um, representing a two-year growth rate of more than 2,000%. And that's outstripping early PC growth rates. Um, 
Well, if you're asking, um, isn't it okay to just keep your current site as is? Um, and I notice that not many people have a mobile site right now. Um, you know, since mobile, your regular website does show up on smartphone browsers, um, then in this example here, I want to kind of show you the differences between a mobile optimized site versus a standard site showing on your browser. Um, so it's not really okay to keep your site as is. And um, because right here is, you should see that with a mobile optimized site, um, there are some key differences. Mobile optimized sites are generally easier to read. Uh, there's no scrolling or pinch and zoom needed. Uh, for those of you who have a smartphone or iPhone, you're probably familiar with zooming in on some websites that don't have a mobile optimized site in order to read the tiny text. And also with mobile sites, um, it's very action oriented, meaning that we have to have clear to call, uh, clear call to actions on the page, directing the visitor to maybe call us or even visit the full site. And that's because mobile users, as we mentioned earlier, they're on the go and they're very action driven. Um, and mobile phones essentially have smaller screen real estates, and they also depend on um, their network providers. Uh, so connections on mobile sites could be slower at 3G or 4G connections. Uh, meaning that they won't allow for an image or flash heavy site. Okay, and on to the M Health Apps landscape. So I like this quote from the head of research at Research to Guidance, uh, who states, "Our findings indicate that long expect the long expected mobile revolution in healthcare is set to happen. Both healthcare providers and consumers are embracing smartphones as a means to improving healthcare." And the research show that. Not only are consumers taking advantage of smartphones to manage and improve their own health, um, a significant number, 43% of mHealth applications are, are actually uh, primarily designed for healthcare professionals. And these include um, CME applications, I mean continued med medical education applications, uh, remote monitoring, and also healthcare management applications. And there are currently uh, over 17,000 mHealth applications in major app stores, and this number is only expected to grow. <clears throat> in a health, um, health consumer study done by Google in the late 2009, it actually showed that 20% of consumers currently use health apps on their mobile device, and that number is only expected to increase. And the increased demand in app usage is met by an explosion in the number of mobile consumer and patient education um, healthcare apps in the market. Um, as you can see from this article, there's been over 3 million downloads for Android health apps. So it's not just about the Apple apps, it's also about the Android apps now. In fact, in a study um, by Research to Guidance, it is predicted that by 2015, 30% of total smartphone users will have used mHealth apps. And that's 500 million people. Um, so it's definitely forecasted that smartphone apps will become the dominant app for mHealth solution. And many healthcare providers or health providers have created useful and popular apps in the market today. Uh, so we have some few examples coming up, um, such as the Mayo Clinic Symptom Checker app. And this is an iPhone app with features that include um, separate searches for adult symptoms and child symptoms here. And search results give users guidance on self-care at home, and the app also provides access to the Mayo Clinic Health Database. And as part of its integrated mobile health strategy, the app links the user to uh, information about care available at nearby Mayo Clinic locations so that users who need to consult a care provider can make an appointment to do so. So it is definitely very action-oriented. And the Mayo Clinic smartphone app uh, reflects app design best practices that make the user interface very simple, action-oriented, as well as linking users to more in-depth info from their website. Another example here is the WebMD uh, free mobile app. They actually had over uh, 1.6 million downloads in the first three months of availability. And this app allows you to check your symptoms, um, similar to the Mayo app, and also access drug and treatment information, get uh, first aid essentials, and check local health listings on the go. So they have a pretty cool integrated uh, map feature that uses um, smartphone um, device capabilities. And another example here is the iTriage Health app. And similar to the first two apps, it allows you to check symptoms, research diseases and procedures, and find a nearby doctor, medical treatment, or pharmacy if needed. 
What's cool about this app is that it provides turn-by-turn -turn navigations, um, directions to get you there. So the navigation is a great integration of smartphone capabilities. And also in some parts of the country, the iTriage uh, app will actually even give you wait times for local emergency, roles, uh, emergency rooms. Um, so it's definitely very functional and very useful for, for the consumer. <coughs> Excuse me. And to help you better understand your audience, we're sharing some research provided by um, PwC on what consumer versus physicians would like to track in regards to health. And hopefully this will give you some ideas on consumer and physician demands that can be met by innovative mobile apps. And let's see, so we see here that both physicians and consumers regard weight and vital signs as important health information to track. However, physicians uh, were more interested in tracking patient blood sugar levels uh, versus only, I think, let's see, 20% of consumers were interested in tra uh, tracking the blood sugar levels. And based on the stats here, 41% uh, would, um, overall it's good to know that 41% of consumers do prefer to have more care via mobile devices, and 27% said that medication reminders via text would be really helpful. Uh, so we do see that there is a demand here from your consumers. And 40% of these consumers are actually willing to pay for remote monitoring devices with a monthly service fee. Um, for physicians, 31% said they currently use or would like to use text messaging for routine administrative communications. And the majority, 57% of physicians, said they would like to monitor patients outside of hospital achieved through mobile devices. And why wouldn't they? Um, mobile devices definitely make the lives for physicians and consumers easier. <clears throat> At this point, if you're thinking about whether you should develop a mobile website or mobile application, and maybe think about, you know, which one should you do first? Um, I saw that in the audience, 20% um, uh, have a mobile app already, which is great. Um, but getting started with a uh, mobile website is easier. Um, that's because mobile websites are quicker to implement compared to developing an app. And it's because it's very similar to a standard website. And with your mobile site, you actually have more control over what you publish without needing approval from app stores. So these are some pros and there's some cons as well. Uh, so your mobile site will, is essentially more accessible by anyone who has a mobile browser. And all smartphones right now have mobile browsing capabilities. And content is also searchable and also allows you the opportunity to do maybe a little mobile SEO to focus on keywords on your site. And in terms of adoption, it's really, uh, definitely easier to get someone to visit your mobile site compared to downloading your mobile app. Mm -hmm. The biggest limitation, however, is the functionality of your site that will be limited because it can't take advantage of the smartphone's hardware features, uh, such as GPS or sensors. And your site load time will depend on your visitor's network provider. Um, so that's why keeping your mobile site simple and clean is highly recommended. Mm -hmm. And that's because um, mobile users um, are on the go, and then you want to make sure that you know, your information is very concise. In terms of mobile apps, it's great in the extensive user experience you can provide with more control over how text and images are displayed within your app. And it takes full advantage of smartphone features, allowing brands to utilize GPS, uh, such as how iTrees' app did so by providing turn-by-turn -turn navigations or the ability to utilize sensors, uh, like shaking your phone to make a call instead of pressing a button. Um, I've actually seen e-commerce um, iPhone apps that allow you to shake the phone to make a purchase, which is interesting and could be potentially dangerous. Um, but it definitely is more innovative in how you can integrate the hardware uh, usage. So you can also use your app offline. Um, so this is an opportunity to capture those who um, don't have fast connections. And while there are many benefits to having an app, there are also some barriers with adoption and usage because you have to put some marketing behind getting people to download your app before using it. And also in terms of resources, uh, developing an application can take longer than developing a mobile site. And publishing changes to your application can be more tedious, requiring the manufacturer's approval and also requiring your user to allow for updates on, for your app. But the reality is that both bring something to the table. Uh, mobile websites are more similar to desktop sites in browsing capabilities and functions, 
However, in the long run, it would be great to have both. And research indicates that smartphone owners are equally active in using the web and using uh, mobile applications. So it's a difference of 3% uh, in terms of usage. So what does it take to build a mobile website? Uh, we showed you some examples, but here we want to dive into uh, some best practices to get you started on how to start um, building a site. So for those, the 60% who don't have either a mobile app or mobile site, um, this, these next few slides should be pretty useful. Um, so connecting um, your brand to mobile users by building a mobile website experience will be really critical. And here we have some mobile site best practices, do's and don'ts. Um, so we've outlined per category and also have some examples of a, a mobile sites that we've developed uh, to showcase these best practices. So for design and user experience, we want to make sure that your site maintains simple branding and design elements, such as the example below using um, similar imagery and the blue color theme. And the navigation must be intuitive and uncluttered. Uh, you want to avoid long scrolling. and Here's a larger uh, version of the example I've seen before. And as you can see, it's also best practices, uh, best practice to link, uh, include a link to your full site in case your user does want to browse the full experience and they don't mind pitching and zooming. Um, so for content, uh, we encourage you to use lists and rich formatting. Um, use popular keyword suggestions. Um, if you guys are familiar with using a, a search browser, you'll see that uh, Google often will include um, suggested keywords for your search terms. So you want to make sure that um, your content aligns with what people are searching for. And also, this is extremely critical. Uh, when people browse your site, even your regular site, you want to make sure there's some kind of call to action. Most of the time, people browsing a mobile site are looking for a location, an address, a doctor. Um, so you want to make sure it's easily accessible. Um, you want to include a call to action, such as a click to call here. And also, again, give the users the ability to navigate its full site if they want to. And if your, um, if your mobile site is lead generation focused, um, perhaps you have a form included, or maybe if it's a promotional, uh, uh, if your site serves a promotional focus and you want to capture leads that way, uh, you want to make sure that your form fields are not too long. Um, those who have smartphones know that you know while it's easier to access the touch screen, it's also hard to enter your information sometimes. So keeping it simple with just the name, number, uh, phone number, and email should be enough. And this is another example of a mobile site we've developed that was very simplistic. It was actually a mobile landing page for um, St. Helene Recovery Center. And you can see that it has design, simple design elements that link back to uh, the main site. Um, but there's also the main call to action, which is to get them to call our client services advisor. In terms of coding, um, due to limitations with mobile network providers, you want to make sure that your developer keeps the code minimalistic to optimize for faster page load times. And your landing page URL should be concise. Oftentimes, brands will add m dot in front of their domain so that the mobile site lives as a subdomain and part of the same brand identity. So for um, our Loma Linda example, it would be maybe m.protons.com. And finally, you want to make sure you include analytics on your website because you want to track how it's performing. And based off of some of the previous examples, we've shown you um, mobile growth in mobile, um, sorry, growth in mobile visitors. And that's because we are constantly checking our site analytics to make sure we're capturing all visitors, desktop or mobile. And um, based on this example here, this is actually a snapshot of how Google Analytics looks like. Uh, so for those who are familiar with it, you have your left-hand side dashboard where you can actually segment the visitors. Uh, so you get an overview of all visitors coming in, and you can actually define it by just mobile visits. And it gets to be, uh, you can drill down to whether, uh, which device they're coming from, and also which carriers. So we can see from this example here that 60% of these visits uh, to one of our client sites um, are coming from iPhones. And you can also drill down to the browser type as well. Okay. <clears throat> now, getting to our last section of our webinar, mobile advertising opportunities for healthcare. Uh, and before we begin, we want to um, take two quick polls to just to better understand our audience and what you guys are currently doing to your, uh, with your mobile advertising. So let me pull this up. 
So first off, this is a simple one. Do you currently engage in mobile advertising? Uh, we want to understand if you know, this is something you're already familiar with. We'll take a few more seconds here. <clears throat> Okay, and let me share these results with you guys. So we see that the majority, 52%, um, are not engaged in mobile advertising. And it's great to know that 28% uh, plan on starting soon. And so these next few slides uh, hopefully will share some great insights on how you can get started. And then we actually have another quick poll question here. Um, we just want to understand if, um, if our audience is currently engaged in any desktop search engine marketing, uh, such as pay-per-click advertising um, or display advertising, uh, just to kind of understand if everyone's familiar with some of the terminologies we're going to present here. Okay, great. We have great participation here. Everyone's fast. Okay, let me close this and share the results with everyone. Okay, so it's good to know that 70% um, or almost 80% of you are currently engaged in um, doing some kind of advertising online. So um, you'll get. Uh, it's good to know that you'll be able to understand some of the terminologies I'm going to talk about here, such as click, such as clicks and click through rates. Okay. So if you're currently started in mobile advertising, then that's great, um, but we see that majority of you haven't started yet. Um, so hopefully these next few slides will give you some ideas on how you can optimize um, your current campaigns for those who are currently doing desktop advertising. Um, so in fact, it, it's actually easier for if you've already started in search engine marketing because to get started, you can actually allocate part of your current search budget to dedicate it to mobile-only campaigns. Um, so we'll talk about how to do so in a little bit. Okay, so let's jump right in. First off, based off of industry research, we know that people take action after viewing mobile ads. And majority, 95% of them search for an address because mobile is very location focused. And, <coughs> sorry. And 53% visit landing pages, which uh, lives the opportunity to capture your mobile visitors. And 35% opt in for emails for more information, um, most of the time for coupons. 34% um, get business information. 24% make purchases, and 21% um, use mobile to increase product awareness. So in terms of mobile advertising options, there are many um, advertising options, just like there are for regular desktop online advertising. And this is a list of advertising options uh, online from uh, the MMA, which is Mobile Marketing Association. And you can actually find a PDF um, guideline of details on ad specs for each. And there's a link listed here for those uh, who want to get more familiar with each topic. But it does get pretty lengthy, so for today's webinar, we want to focus on uh, just mobile web, especially since majority of our audience haven't gotten started with mobile advertising yet. Um, so if there is interest in learning more about other advertising options, do let us know. Uh, we can likely provide more details over the phone or email, or if there's a strong need, we can present another webinar focused just on mobile advertising. <clears throat> So in terms of mobile web advertising options, we want to focus on the mobile web. Um, and to keep it simple, it includes search ads, web display ads, and also in-app display ads. So this is very similar to how your desktop online advertising is working right now. And we're focusing on mobile search and display today. And we're focusing on mobile search for healthcare because this is essentially the low-hanging fruit. And we're going to dive into how you can get started with Google AdWords. And as mentioned previously, mobile search is growing exponentially. And healthcare mobile search growth rate has increased by over 1,000% over the last year. And here are some examples of mobile queries provided by our partners at Google that showcase an increase in mobile search volume across many categories. 
um, such as leukemia, lung cancer, children's illnesses in hospitals and dental. Uh, we saw on our attendee list that many of you guys come from uh, medical centers and hospitals, so this is uh, very relevant to your audience that uh, they're searching online for um, this information on their mobile devices. And the potential of mobile click-through uh, click throughs is huge. Just from last year's clicks for mobile devices, um, uh, mobile devices clicks have grown by 400% in the industry. And at this rate, uh, based on this data, uh, it's forecasted that by the end of 2011, click throughs for mobile will represent more than 16% of all clicks. <clears throat> and this is significant uh, because we want to be able to reach people who are clicking through to the ads. Um, so in terms of mobile search ad formats, um, these are some very um, accessible and easy formats that we can use uh, from Google. Um, they include click-to-call ads, uh, location targeting, and also site links. Uh, so click-to-call ads, <clears throat> if you guys have done searches on your mobile devices, you may have seen these before, um, ads that include phone numbers on them. And it makes it easy for the user to directly call um, a location such as a hospital if they're trying to make immediate decision or uh, find out information. Um, um, from beta testing, Google beta participants just actually saw a uh, 5 to 30 percent increase in click-through rates uh, for the ads that had the click-to-call number. And it also includes a cool feature called location targeting, so you want to be able to target users based off of where they're at. Um, as mentioned, a lot of mobile users are doing searches that are very loca location-focused, so finding uh, things that are nearby and um, getting information about the address or the phone number. Um, so Google Ads actually has the ability to provide uh, maps and also directions for users that are on the go. And another cool feature are site links on these ads. And this is similar to the desktop ads where you can essentially include links to other pages on your site for more options and conversion. And this is an example of a click-to-call ad using, um, this is not an actual ad, but we use our one of our clients' names to showcase how, where everything is positioned. Um, so you have your standard um, link to your site, and then you have a short, a little uh, space for you to have a few characters on uh, what you want the user to do. And also you can include the phone number. Um, so this is great because if you actually don't have a mobile site, but you have a call center uh, or um, yeah, if you have someone to pick up the phone, you can actually just include the number and people can click on the number to reach you. So that it actually um, bypasses the step of going to the mobile site. But of course, we recommend having the option, uh, giving the users the option to go to a mobile site in case you want to research for more information. Uh, so the benefits of click-to-call ads are click-to-call ads, uh, they create an opportunity to reach your customers in the right place, uh, in the right mindset, who has general results in high-quality leads and dramatically lower cost per acquisitions. And it's a great opportunity to capture customers who wouldn't otherwise convert on their mobile devices. Um, um, just think about if you have a very convoluted website that has a lot of information, they're taking a long time to search for that information. Um, they might just leave and not call you and call one of your competitors. Um, so with click-to-call ads, we're seeing much higher click-through rates. Um, ads with phone numbers are seeing as much as a 30% increase in overall mobile click-through rates and lower cost per clicks for that same top position. And in this slide here, we have an example of our internal data, actually. Our numbers, so we want to make sure our numbers are aligned with what we're seeing in industry reports. So it's actually great because comparing our desktop um, search campaigns versus our mobile campaigns, mobile cost per clicks are actually 35% lower than desktop. And this is great for us and great for our clients. Um, and that's mostly because uh, right now um, there's not a lot of comp competition in this space. Um, so not as many people are bidding for those same keywords. Uh, but this is likely to change um, in the coming months or year because as more people get more educated on what mobile advertising, mobile search opportunities are, they, uh, the market could become more saturated. And we also see, um, in line with industry reports, that our click-through rates are 29% higher than desktop. And this is a significant change. And if you're wondering why, and it's pretty straightforward, on your mobile phone, if you're bidding for the top uh, two positions, you on uh, on the Google search page um, because your mobile screen real estate is so small, um, 
half of the page is essentially your ad. Um, so it actually really replaces those organic search listings and you really come first um, when you're doing mobile paid search. Um, and also for mobile, mo uh, mobile search results, there's actually only four positions. You have two top ad positions and then you have two bottom ad positions. Um, and it's definitely optimal for you to um, make sure your ads appear in the top two because um, not it's not very often that people will sort of scroll all the way to the bottom to see your ads. So what this means for your organization is that right now competition is lower in mobile health, so cost per click and um, click-through rates are better compared to desktop. And this isn't always the case for some other industries, such as sales or retail, um, because they're a lot more competitive. So the time to act in mobile is now. And getting started in mobile search today uh, means you know you want to take advantage of those lower lower cost per clicks and higher click through rates, and it's very time sensitive. And that's because you want to start testing and building your campaign spend history. Uh, so it's great to see that a big number of you have uh, started in search marketing. And then if you have, then you're familiar with something called the Google Quality Score. And the Quality Score is essentially um, the number that Google assigns to your, uh, your keywords to see how, how well it's been performing through time. And the better your, uh, your quality score, the lower your cost per clicks are, uh, meaning if your keywords are very relevant to the content on your site, relevant to the ad copy, Google gives you a better quality score. And it also depends on how long you, you've had your campaign on. Um, so the longer you've been spending with Google means there's more data and they understand how well your click-through rates are doing. So obviously if you get started early on, your click-through rates will be higher because there's less competition, more people will click through to your ad. And that actually builds up really great campaign history for your mobile campaign. And you want to make sure that your mobile campaigns are created separately from your desktop campaigns. Um, if you're currently running desktop campaigns on AdWords, you can actually check your settings to see if it's opted in mobile. A lot of times when you create a new campaign, um, it's automatically opted in. So this is probably something you want to ask your in-house team or your agency to see what they're doing. And you can actually see some data from the, um, you know, the past year or so on how many clicks are coming from mobile versus desktop. And it's great that Google actually separates it so you can see if there's an opportunity for you to create a mobile campaign. And in this graph here, we see that when you have a hybrid campaign, meaning you have a mobile and desktop campaign combined versus a mobile-only campaign, you see a 29% increase when you have a mobile campaign for your mobile clicks. And same for click-through rates. Uh, when you have a separate mobile campaign, um, you see an 11% increase in click-through rate. And this is significant because um, you actually get more control over performance gains, meaning there's more control over your bids, your budget, your keywords, and obviously your mobile landing page. And this is an example of how everything kind of works together. Uh, now having introduced how mobile landing pages work and mobile apps work and how search advertising works for mobile. Uh, so if a consumer searches for information, and this is just for examples, um, like drug rehabilitation, you see the ad, you can essentially click on the ad to go directly to make a phone call, or if they want to make um, do more research, it can click through to their landing page. And similarly, if you have display ads or in-app display ads, um, you can click on the link and then it goes to the page, and then they can, from the page, it's encouraged for you to include a click-to-call action. Um, that way they can call you if they wanted to. So we're wrapping the webinar up now, and um, hopefully everything has been very um, informative. So key takeaways here are smartphone adoption is growing at an explosive rate, which means there's an increase in mobile web usage and mobile browsing, and it's great for advertisers to know that people are always online. And it's important to know that mHealth searches are increasing every month. So um, a great way to check how it's impacting your website is to look into your analytics and segment out those mobile visits. And brings us to the second point that developing a mobile compatible website is a must, especially if your website right now is very content heavy. You want to make sure that information is easy, uh, easy to read and accessible for your uh, mobile visitors. And third, uh, the mobile application market is also growing and there is a strong demand from both physicians and consumers for mobile health apps. So hopefully some of those slides before um, can give you some ideas on how to get started 
on creating an app um, to understand what the demand is. And fourth, increasing your brand awareness through mobile advertising early on in the mobile space is very critical to your launch and success because you want to build on that data and optimize. Um, you want to be ahead of the competition to get started. And this is a plug for our agency. Um, there's definitely great benefits uh, working with an agency. And hopefully from this webinar, we showcase some of our uh, strategic ideas and research uh, that really help us execute well. Uh, so strategic partnership is really key. Uh, we want to make sure you select an agency that really aligns with your, with your strategic goals. That will make sure that your overall marketing strategy is not lost in just your online marketing efforts. And agencies are generally here to improve your team's efficiency, to really get you started, uh, providing the expertise, research, and support. Um, so if you have some questions, you know, wondering if you need recommendations on mobile efforts or developing a mobile site app or just getting started at advertising, we're definitely here to help. And this is a leave behind for everyone. Um, I know that Zach said we'll be sending out the slides and this is also posted online. Um, so if you just wanted to print this out for your internal team, uh, your tech team, this is some great um, do's and don'ts um, just to keep in mind when you get started on developing a mobile site. Okay, and that's about it. So we're wrapping things up and um, if you guys have any questions, this is the time to ask. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jessica. Um, like Jessica just mentioned, if you haven't asked a question yet, you can I'm sorry. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open it up for some questions now. Um, we have a few already, and we've got a few extra minutes too. So if there's just something on your mind that you'd like some extra details on, go ahead and type it in the box, and we'll get to it. So um, first one, Jessica, is that someone was interested in they want to know, do you, do you have to uh, wait or should you wait until you, you've redeveloped your desktop site before developing a mobile site? So uh, some people that maybe they're, they're kind of holding off on their mobile strategy until their, their regular site is fixed. Is that something that you would suggest or is it something you can do at the same time? How does that work? That is a great question. And I think you should actually get started on your mobile site. Um, that's because it's two separate markets. Um, you know, you have your mobile visitors and you have your desktop visitors. Ideally, you would have your desktop site ready, uh, but a mobile site is actually easier to develop. Um, and if you're in the process of developing your desktop site and you have that content ready, um, you can translate that to become a little more simplified on your mobile site to get started. Um, but overall, your desktop and your mobile site should really align with you know, your overall content strategy for your website. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it'll definitely be quicker to get started on mobile site. Having something is better than having nothing. Great. Um, next one we have here is, do you think that, what, what do you think the future of non-smartphones are? I mean, is the world just coming to the point where everyone is just going to have smartphones and that's going to be the only way, or is there still some hope uh, to market to the people that might not have smartphones right now? Okay, and that is a good question as well. And I think based off of research, um, non-smartphones will essentially cease to exist. Um, and that's just in line with how the evolution of technology is coming about, um, how mobile phones are developing. Smartphone adoption has been greatly increasing. And more and more people want to have those advanced features. Um, more and more people want to be able to have that GPS capability, the ability to do search on your phone, and go online on the go. So I think that while you know, it's good to keep in mind um, that you want to cater to all audiences, and there are people who still have the non-smartphones, um, but you want to make sure that you're adapting to the future. So checking your web analytics is actually a good way to start to see how many mobile visitors are coming from smartphones versus not smartphones. And if you have Google Analytics, it's actually really easy to be able to segment it, that out. Um, so if you guys have more questions on how to do that, um, feel free to email us and we can show you how. Great, awesome. Um, kind of more of a technical question here, Jessica. Um, and this is uh, just something that 
Um, do you suggest when developing a mobile site using HTML5 or mobile XHTML for the development of the site? Uh, I know we've done a few, so you might be able to answer uh, better to that than I can. Okay, and I'm not a mobile developer, so unfortunately I don't have a straightforward answer for that. Uh, but I know that XHTML is, should be fine. Uh, but that's something we'll definitely follow up with the person who asked that question. And our developer will have a better answer than I do, sorry. But I think XHTML should be th the right answer, but we'll follow up. Great. Uh, we got one more here. Um, last question, so and then we'll finish things up. Once we have a mobile site developed, uh, and ready to go, what are some of the best ways to go about promoting it and making sure uh, people see it and are using it? Okay, um, so once you have a mobile site, um, hopefully some of the mobile advertising opportunities listed. Um, let me actually go back to these slides. So let's see, right here. Um, there's a number of, I know we didn't cover all of it, but there's definitely a number of ways to uh, advertise your mobile app or your mobile site. And I think search is the low hanging fruit. That's a great way to get started. And that's because people, when they're looking for information, the first thing they do is go to a search engine. And um, I think 70% go to Google. That's why we focus on Google. So making sure that you guys have, um, if you're not listed um, on the top search results pages organically, meaning the non-paid listings, uh, for keywords for your hospital, your, uh, your organization, or keywords related to your organization, then make sure you have paid search ads available. Um, so targeting people on the first uh, search results page. And also, if you want to make sure that people download an app uh, later on, you want to consider mobile display advertising. And display ads are the ads that appear on regular sites. Like if they visit a WebMD, they'll be able to see your um, your, your ad that can link to your website or your um, mobile app. Awesome. And actually, while uh, Jessica was answering that last one, we had a few more questions come in. So uh, we'll get to those real quick. Um, in terms of social media integration, Jessica, is that something that you can only do with mobile apps, or is that something that you can also do with, with the mobile site, You know, use, integrating your Facebook and Twitter um, are those features available both ways? Do they work better on one or the other? Uh, how does that go? Sure, that's a great question because um, I know I realize I didn't actually touch so much about social media platforms, and one of the top activities that people are doing is uh, browsing their social networks. But it's actually also interesting to know that in the healthcare industry, people are not going to their social networks for health information. So unless you position your organization's Twitter or Facebook profile to have a strong purpose in answering health-related questions. Um, there's not a strong need to drive them there, but if it's purely for awareness, um, on your mobile site, you can definitely integrate your social networks, um, most likely Twitter or Facebook, um, as link icons. Uh, it's very similar to how it looked like on a desktop site where you have a section where it links to the icons. Um, so that's not very invasive. It doesn't overtake your content. And that should be very like secondary to your main call to action. If you'd rather have someone make an appointment, that might be more important than um, getting someone to uh, like your page. Um, unless it's a very social media focused you know, acquisition process that you want to get more likes, then definitely put it on there and make it very visible. And same with apps. Um, you can include your icons, uh, your social network icons, uh, in a non-intrusive way, maybe on the top or very, on the bottom, or maybe have it on a secondary page if it's not your primary call to action. Uh, but it's definitely a good idea to integrate that within your mobile site and mobile app. Great. Um, one last question here, and actually this will be the last one because we're coming up on the end of our time here. Um, what is our opinion on the use of QR codes? And I know this is something that we've gotten uh, actually a couple questions about. We didn't touch on too much detail in the webinar, but um, using them for print materials for those that have smartphones, what, what's uh, your opinion, Jessica, on how those work specifically for, for the healthcare industry? Sure. I love that someone asked the question about QR codes. Um, I love QR codes, and sorry I didn't include an example here, but QR codes, for those who don't know, are um, this little 
square, it's almost like a barcode, um, the square icon that um, lots of smartphone users have applications that scan the QR codes and allows you to easily uh, go to a website that's linked to the QR code. So I think it's great if you use your QR code, especially in print, <clears throat> in print material, if you guys are advertising in magazines or even use uh, newspapers, um, it's great to include that QR code so that someone on their mobile device don't have to manually type in an address and they can essentially scan it to go directly there. Um, the adoption of QR codes are actually, it is growing, uh, not as quickly as some marketers would like. Um, so, you know, there is more to see in the future, but I think if you get started by implementing a QR code, it's not going to hurt. And it's just allowing someone uh, to access your website a lot easier. And a great way to use your QR code is also make sure your link is tagged with analytics, uh, meaning uh, when we made the suggestion to keep your mobile site URL very short and concise, that's because if people are visiting it and typing it in, we want to make sure they remember it. Uh, but if QR codes are generally associated with promotions, um, you can make sure you tag your QR code um, so you know where it's coming from. And it's okay to have a longer URL associated with it because people are not manually typing in your, your URL. You're, they're scanning it from their phone and it's automatically appearing on, on the browser. So that is a great question and I think you guys should definitely integrate QR codes. Uh, awesome. Well. Just as a, one final reminder to everybody, uh, we are going to have the entire presentation uh, posted on our Knowledge Center website uh, later today. You can find that at www.earthboundmediagroup.com. Um, we're also going to, you know, in, on our website in the Knowledge Center, you're also going to be able to find all of our past webinars, uh, presentations, case studies. Everything that we've kind of, you know, resource that we put out there, you'll be able to find there. We're also, like I said at the beginning, we are going to go ahead and, and put the slides up on SlideShare as well. So you will have those available to print out, use in your own presentations, uh, all that good stuff. So uh, we'd also love for you to uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, with lots of great posts and uh, links to information that we throw up there quite often. So definitely stay in contact with us. Make sure you uh, email us, ask us, or if you have any other questions on the topic, we'll be sure to answer them as quickly as possible. So thanks again for taking the time to join us today. Hope you learned a lot. Uh, thanks for the questions, and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care, and uh, have a great day. Bye. Thank you, everyone.